Hey, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at the criteria we need to keep in mind when we are selecting our hardware for the home lab. It will be on 24-7, so therefore it has to be energy efficient. It needs to have appropriate network ports so that you can set up your PFSense VMs. And if you want to look at the video, please check the link in the description. Today, we are finally going to set up our home lab server. In my case, it's Dell R720. In this video, we are going to set up Proxmox on it and we'll set up the appropriate networking that will enable us to segment our network and we'll set up the network according to our network topology. If you want to look more into how we set up the network, please check out the first video in this series. Let's get started. Okay, we are back at the computer screen. So just to refresh your memories, this is the network we're going to build. I've gone through this network in detail in the first video in this series. Please have a look at that if you want to know more about this. In this video, we are going to be focusing on just this part only. So here I have my internet coming inside my premises and connecting through an ISP modem and then my home router is connected to my ISP modem. As you can see, my home router is at 192.168.5.1 IP address. And the reason is that I had to change it from dot one to dot five address because there are a lot of routers that use the default IP address range of 192.168.1 or dot zero. It creates problems if you're outside of your home and you want to VPN into your house and then it can uh, create some problems for the uh, if the local address is also on the same range. My computer is connected to this home router and now from this home router I have two e Ethernet cables going to my Dell R720 server. So one is for iDRAC system. So iDRAC comes with the Dell R720. I have an iDRAC enterprise um, software that allows me to manage the server without physically connecting to it. So that's one cable going from router to the iDRAC port. It's like a network network port at the back of the at the back of the server. The other Ethernet cable is going to one of the uh, NICs uh, that come with the server. So I have four Ethernet ports that come by default with Dell R720. And that is also gonna be on the same network, 192.168.5 network. And I'm gonna statically assign an IP address of .5. Now on the right hand side, I have my Cisco switch. And this I intend to use purely for PFSense. And once we set up the PFSense, we'll go through this. But a quick overview is that in my Dell R720 server, I have 10 gigabit Ethernet card as well. So I uh, so it comes with two ports. So I connect two Ethernet ports from my Cisco switch to those 10 gig ports. And I set up an LACP link, which is link aggregation control protocol. So basically it just aggregates two cables and they would work as one. So it is good for load balancing as well as if one link is down, the other will be up. Uh, if you know a port is faulty, so it will continue to function. So these two ports will work as one and you have to enable LSCP on both sides from Proxmox and from Cisco switch. So this is it. This is this is our network. Now, in order to install Proxmox, you have to go to the Proxmox website. So it's proxmox.com. And you click on downloads. And then you select Proxmox virtual environment. And then ISO images. And this is the latest version that is available that was updated on 4th of May. And then you uh, simply click download. You can download it from BitTorrent. Once that's done, we need to uh, open up 
iTrack and map the CD drive to this ISO so that it can boot from it if I do, if I restart the server. So let's do that. Change screens. Uh, so so basically, I'm this is how it looks like. I'm connected to my server using a virtual console client. You need Java for it, um, and um, it is initializing. I just rebooted the server, and uh, what you do is you map a virtual media. Uh, here you can see I've used the Proxmox ISO that um, we just downloaded and on the next boot I asked it to boot from virtual CD drive because I've already done it so it's next is showing is just once I reboot it again it will be a normal boot um, so um, hopefully once it initializes all the firmware interfaces the the boot up process of Dell R720 is a little bit longer um, and because it's a little bit longer, um, it, it can take a wee while. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sit tight and let, um, let's wait for the uh, setup screen to appear. So here we have it. Uh, this is the welcome screen. Um, so I'm going to press enter to install Proxmox. Okay, so hopefully the license would appear and there it is. Um, you can read about it if you want to. I'm just going to click I agree. And I'm going to select my Samsung SSD 870. So I have another one. That's an NVMe. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my Samsung SSD 870. And then then click on option I want to limit the root partition to be the lowest and the remaining I want to allocate it to to my VMs so I'm just gonna assign 30 GB I think it's more than enough um, uh, for uh, initial ISOs and containers um, so 30 GB, GB is enough leave other options as is if you have more than two drives attached to your server then i would definitely definitely recommend zfs um, that's my favorite uh, file system and i've been using zfs for years now uh, especially uh, on TrueNAS. Click ok and then click next set up your country i'm in the uk all good next set up a secure password and set up an email where you can get some um, um, any alerts next uh, and this is the EN ENO4 uh, so you can see I have quite a few so these are my 10 gigabit NIC um, card and uh, these four came with the server uh, so this one ENO4 is actually directly connected to my router uh, so we're gonna select that and I am going to name it uh, this and I am also going to say is 5.5 .5. and DNS and gateway is fine and let's click next and that's it click install so remember two are the key things if you have a bigger ssd uh, in your server you want to limit max root you want to limit the iso and the container space because if you let it do it automatically it wastes a lot a lot of um, storage um, allocating uh, to your iso images and, and containers the second thing is just like you if you have a separate router that is connected to your isp then um, i have two cables coming into the server one is for the idrax system this is where i can remotely access my server so i don't need to connect it directly and the second one is 
for my pfSense WAN interface. So it's going to get its IP from my main router um, so that, you know, I can show you no problem and you will not be able to see my public IP address. So that's a good thing. But the other thing is that you need to make sure that initially you set up your Proxmox IP address in the range of your home network. Yeah, so once it's installed, you'll be able to access this GUI and you will be able to update it, make it ready. And once your PFSense works, uh, VM is ready, then you can uh, change the networking. And there it was. We have successfully installed Proxmox using Dell's iDrag software. In the next video, we will configure the networking, update the system, and set up Proxmox for hardware pass-through. See you there.